Alleluia. Christ is risen. May his grace and peace be with you. Let us now praise famous men and women. Today, we anticipate Memorial Day. Let us pray as we remember our honored dead and their sacrifice. Their bodies are buried in peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony, and as we were going to the place of prayer, 
We met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, <clears throat> but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city and they are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds and then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Revelation of John. At the end of these visions, I, John, heard these words. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say come, and let everyone who hears say come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, 
Jesus prayed for his disciples. Then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. the name of God who creates, redeems, and sanctifies. Amen. Amen. When my oldest daughter was four years old, she went to a sweet little preschool. And every morning, the head of the school, who was a grandmotherly figure, very loving and warm towards the children. Every morning that lady gave them a little thought for the day and a little encouragement. And my daughter just loved her like another grandmother. But one night, this lady, whose name I can't remember, but I'm gonna call her Mrs. McIver. One night, she died quietly in her sleep, peacefully. And the word was sent out to all the parents that this had happened, and it was explained to us that the children would be told, very simply, no drama, but that when they came home that day, they would know. So my daughter didn't seem to be upset by this, but we did remember Mrs. I, as she called her, in, in our prayers that night. And it wasn't until a few days later that we were driving home in the car one afternoon and this little voice pipes up from the back seat and says, Mommy, I had a dream last night. Okay. Yes, God sent Mrs. McIver to talk to me. And she was very happy. And she wanted me to know that she was praying for us every day. And she was going to keep on praying for us. Well, this was kind of out of the blue. I was clutching the steering wheel thing. <laughs> what, what's going on there in the back seat? And she said, she went on a little more about it. She said, yes, she is in heaven and she is praying. And what's more, she knows we're praying for her too. And I thought, wow, from the voice of babes, not only was it wonderful that this little child had a sense of that great world that's beyond all that we can see and know now, but she knew there was somebody somebody on the other side there, someone that she loved who was praying for her. 
remembering her all the time. Thinking back on that story made me think of how often every single one of us could use that knowledge. That someone over on the other side is praying for us. Someone's in our corner and ready to see us through. And of course, there is someone, Christ, who has ascended and is in the realm of divinity, a realm beyond our understanding, but real to us as people of faith. We need this knowledge just every day. And I think this time of year, uh, some of us, especially ones with children in our lives, need it more than ever because their schedules change. We have graduations and ceremonies and exams and all sorts of things that are ending a school year. And then another set of things that are starting up summer. We're merging calendars and rushing around with orientations. And of course today, we also have a solemn time remembering those for Memorial Day, those who fought and who died and who served all of us, served for the purposes of, of freedom and of justice and of taking care of people in the world who need to be protected. So that is a solemn moment for us and it connects us to that world of prayer. And of course we have the news, thanks to the miracle of modern communication, we can have war in our living rooms, we can know just what's going on in Ukraine, how sad things are there. And this week we were all shattered really by the news from Uvalde, Texas. So many people, sad, brokenhearted, angry. We remember them in our prayers and we also remember them as we think of our country, knowing the wonderful resources we have, our resourcefulness, our courage, our desire to take care of our children. And we are all challenged to find ways to do that. So we could use some extra prayer. And thank goodness, thank goodness in today's gospel, we see that we're getting it. This gospel takes place at the end of the Last Supper. So Jesus has already told his followers that there will be suffering, but there will be glory. Now they haven't fully understood it, but he's told them. And then at the end of supper, he starts to pray. He's no longer speaking directly to them, but they are witnessing his life with the Father, with God. And he begins praying for himself and this moment of suffering and glory that he's about to step into. And then he prays for the disciples, those sitting around the table with him, that they also may take part in that life that he has with God. And then we get to today's gospel where he begins to pray for all those who will come to believe through the first set of disciples and the next set and the next set and the next set on through the centuries. So he's praying for us. He's praying for you. Jesus himself at the Last Supper in a way that passes time is fervently praying for us. He says, may they be one. He's talking about a particular kind of oneness. I'm sure he would love to see all the Christian churches be one and everybody within an individual church be united. But he's saying more than that, something a little different than that. He's saying that he wants us as a group and as every individual to be one with the life of God. So that life of God, which is, which is the wellspring of beauty and joy and courage and wisdom and goodness 
that life, he wants us to be one with it as he is one with it. Some people now write a lot about how the Trinity is a relationship. The Creator, the Son, and the Spirit, and that life flows within them. And Jesus is saying, I want you to be part of that life. He's asking that of God. Earlier in John, John has used the image of the vine and its branches. I am the vine, you are the branches. And we think of the sap in that vine spreading out to every branch, maybe in ways, or certainly in ways, beyond what we can understand. But that sap is available to us. And the the book of Revelation, that reading we had this morning, uses yet another image for it, talking about the water of life, that water that flows from the heart of God from the loving heart of Christ, through us, in us. And because we have it, because we are part of this divine love, we become like one big package of love out in the world, representing all the vision and the life of God and what God wants to give to the world. This week I listened to a a podcast where people discuss preaching about different passages. They were talking about this passage, and one person told a story that I liked. It was about a mother who uh, had homeschooled her children when they were young, and when the oldest child got to middle school age, he told his mother that he wanted to go out of their little home environment and venture out into the wider world and go to public middle school. She supported him in this and he got his school uniform and got all ready. But the night before, she could tell that this young man was quite nervous. So she looked in on him before he went to bed and told him good night the way she always did and he said, Mom, could you come pray for me? And she said, well, you know, I I do pray for you every night. I've told you children that. Every night in my prayers, I think of you. And he said, no, no, right now. (laughs) He said, could you just come sit on my bed and could you say those prayers right out loud? And of course she did. I don't know that that made the first day of middle school any easier for him. We all know that middle school can be a challenge. There are wonderful things to discover, but there are difficult people as well as nice ones. I'm sure he was nervous that day, but he knew. He knew who he had in his corner. His mother was at home and she was rock solid and she was praying for him, and she was going to be on his side, on his team, in his corner, whatever image works for you. He had that prayer warrior praying for him. So we know that Jesus, Jesus himself is praying for us. That prayer that he began at the Last Supper crosses all time. And it's a fervent prayer, praying that each of us might be endowed with what we need in that life of God and might participate. That doesn't mean, just like for the young teenager, it doesn't mean that life will be easy or perfect. It doesn't mean that we won't have to face suffering and difficult challenges as a group. But it does mean that we will always know, always, that Christ is on our side. And not just in general, but specifically. Whatever problem it is that we're dealing with, whether it's in our national life, our church life, our personal life, our home life, whatever it is, I pray that you will always know that Jesus is praying for you. He's rooting for you. He's in your corner. 
and we join with that whole throng that's represented in the book of Revelation and we say, oh Lord, come. And we say, we come. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, from God from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, as we come before you, grant us a glimpse of your glory, praying, Lord of glory, change us, and we shall be changed. Mighty God, as we come before your glory, fill us with your spirit. Renew our vision, restore our faith, Refresh your church. Lord, we pray that the whole world may, be, may wait upon you and show the gifts of the Spirit. We pray for Rob, our bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. We pray for the clergy of St. Paul's. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember the staff and campers at Camp Trinity. And in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of South India. We pray for all ministers and peoples who are losing vision, for all in the church who have lost faith and are without hope. Lord of glory, change us, and we shall be changed. We pray for the leaders of the nation, that they may serve with integrity and justice, that they may be aware that their gifts and power come from you. We pray for world unity and peace. We pray especially that the war between Russia and Ukraine would cease and that the kingdoms of the world would become the kingdom of Christ our Lord. Lord of glory, change us. We shall be Lord, grant that in our homes we may learn to wait upon you Make us sensitive to each other and our needs. As you give us gifts, may we freely share them with others. Lord, teach us all to be gracious and generous. Lord of glory, change us. And we shall Lord, may the glory of your presence transform lives that are dull and drab. We pray that all those who are dispirited may discover your spirit in their lives. We bring before you all who are down or distressed, all who are weak and discouraged for your uplifting, O oh God. We pray for friends and loved ones who are struggling at this time, who are ill or weary. We pray especially for Earl, 
for Father John, for Judy, Joe, Alice, Russ, for Elaine, Marianne, Larry, Scotty, Richard, Sib, for Tammy, Lyle, William, Jenny, Carrie, Dale, Catherine, Joanne, Barbara, and Louise. Lord of glory, change us, and we shall be changed. For an end to senseless acts of violence, as we remember those who suffered devastating loss in Uvalde, Texas, we pray for all those affected by the violence of others, for all who have lost their lives and all who mourn them. We pray for searching reflection on the part of legislators as to the best ways to help prevent the repetition of such sad events. Lord of glory, change us. And we shall be changed. We give thanks that when we face death, we have hope. You renew us by your spirit and restore us in your love. We pray for all who have passed through death and rejoice in life eternal, especially Ken Crawford, Granville Powell, and all the victims of the shooting in Uvalde, Texas. Lord of glory, and we shall be changed. Almighty Father, who through, our great through your great love raised your Son into glory. Help us to know we are not alone, to know we dwell in you and you in us, to know that the ascended Lord is with us always, and that your Spirit comes to guide and strengthen us. We ask this in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit are one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We welcome you to St. Paul's this Sunday and are happy to have you with us. There are a couple of announcements pertaining to the life of the parish that are found in your bulletin. Uh, one is a date change. You will notice that part one of the, uh, the movies to be offered, movie and pizza part is to be offered this summer. It should be uh, part two of the first one was June 15th. It's listed as June 12th in the bulletin, but it should be June 15th. If you need to take your phone out at this time and add that in your calendar, you can do so, or you can wait till you get home. Uh, also, a thank you to um, everyone who assisted with the picnic last Sunday afternoon. It was, a, it was a wonderful event. Even in the midst of rain, we had 100 people who came out to, to be with one another in fellowship and, and join good food and, to, and worship as well. And thank you to all those who helped to uh, make last week such a success. As you can see, uh, Father Lee is away this week on vacation. He's not, however, he's working today. Uh, hopefully he'll take some time with his, be with his family later this week. He will be returning next week. And we all know what next Sunday is, don't we? Pentecost. Wow. <laughs> I hope the spirit comes a lot stronger than you. Bring. So what is next Sunday? Pentecost. Pentecost. Glory to God. So... We hope that all of you will be here next Sunday, and please invite a friend to join you for worship. Are there any other announcements for the life of the parish? Hope that you'll join us for refreshments in the parish hall. When the service is over with, just go along the walkway over here and just follow the, the smell of food and uh, the opportunity for food and for fellowship. Again, welcome today. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you've graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Wait for the Spirit. Expect the Spirit. Make room for the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of the ascended Christ.